good evening everybody so today uh, we will start with the xla approach so previously we have seen uh, in tensorflow of course it, it's it's quite vast and and in terms of uh, flexibility control and and different types of approaches that we have seen you have seen some uh, distribution strategies pipeline strategies and so on so <laughs> the basic flow is write simple python code run on different accelerators depending on different targets that you may have and you get uh, optimized performance with with different approaches right so but <clears throat> today we will do something uh, something extra something bit different from uh, the traditional flow of tensorflow uh, writing codes for your models and and building uh, deep neural network uh, models for your targets. So here, uh, diversion is not in terms of writing the code. So the exactly same thing, whatever you have written, everything will be there. Just in terms of the compilation strategy, we will be taking a different path. And that uh, you will see uh, is, is, is giving you much more better performance and a lot more opportunities for opt optimization. So the basic TensorFlow core, if you see, so in the in the in the front end you have the TensorFlow where you will be uh, building your models, whatever you see actually. And uh, in, in the in the middle layer you have the existing TensorFlow core which is written in C++ and and that is being uh, being in the back end which will. Uh, which is providing the support for your target devices like GPUs, TPUs, CPUs, and, and multiple uh, devices with multiple nodes and so on. So this is the traditional TensorFlow uh, compilation. And here, uh, now we would like to uh, add one more layer in this, which is the TensorFlow project, which will actually compile your, your TensorFlow code for your XLA devices. This is one another layer of made up device okay. so basically uh, the target for this JIT compiler will be XLA device which is very and highly optimized uh, device in terms of operations so you will see that the tensorflow which supports maybe uh, thousands of operations but XLA device supports very limited number of operations and those are very very uh, highly optimized and that's how you will get the optimized performance for the target, which will actually the uh, converted code or code generated by the XLA compiler will be for the target devices like CPU, GPU, and TPU, and so on. So now, what uh, XLA is all about, that we will see in a bit. But let's look at one traditional way of writing code and, and inter interfering it, how it is going to be executed. So as you can see here, uh, one code is there where you are actually multiplying this uh, 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 power of two into three. Uh, so basically you are operating on these two inserts, which is X and Y, and they are defined as, let's say, with these dimensions and these shapes. And then when you are running this example, that means you are operating on X and Y, how that is being written here, right? Now, if it is eager execution, it will be evaluated immediately from the Python bytecode. And if you want to optimize the performance again, so then you will uh, would like to add one wrapper uh, before that. But what that wrapper is, we will see. So when you are compiling this code, this essentially you can see that there are several operations. One is this power operation. One is multiply operation. One is addition operation, right? One is mean operation and so on. So let's say four operations we have. And if you are compiling for your target GPU, let's say. So that means you are actually generating four kernels for the GPU target GPU. So that, that you are seeing here. So one is for power, one is for multiply, uh, multiplication, one is for addition and, and, and mean and so on. So, so these four kernels you are actually generating. So that means your code is essentially converted into uh, your, your target GPU. 
and each operation is essentially the CUDA kernel. Okay? So basically, you underneath uh, your CUDA C++ is being generating the code. Uh, so now, what, what is the, uh, the concern here? The concern here is the number of kernels that you are generating. For this simple one-line code, you are generating four kernels. So you imagine if you are doing one TensorFlow, uh, let's say, model training, how many number of operations that you will generate and those many number of kernels and they will be called again and again. You can think about the complexity that, that you are going to uh, burden with the, with the target GPU that you have. So what, what we want to do is that we will, of course, first optimization is uh, you add this ef dot function runtime. So what it will do, it will serialize the code. Basically, you do this wrapper, create this wrapper for at ef dot function, and you define that function inside the wrapper, and that will actually generate uh, the target computational graph. Okay, so this is your graph as you can see: square, multiplication, addition, mean. So all these operations are making up the graph. And the, and the performance gain is in terms of you, you are not running anymore in the Python runtime. So, so uh, and, and you can run it anywhere then, right? You can deploy anywhere this, this graph. So that way you are getting some optimization with, with the tf dot function. But it is not enough. You still have the number of operations that are actually being generated as kernels inside your code. So the limitations are the 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 function tf dot function runtime is not generating new codes actually the, the essentially the codes are the the primitive ones right and it is limited to fixed number of predefined kernels so whatever number of kernels you have and those kernels are from the library and they will take the operations from the kernels and they will make this now what if you can generate new optimized code on the fly depending on the targeting right so uh, new optimized code on the fly so there are three uh, more concerns here after the gap uh, code generated new code generated for new kernels so that means you need to somehow optimize those kernels into a new kernel you, you into a new set of kernels so that means you need some uh, new compilation right and uh, on the fly, JIT compilation will give you on the fly, and and code new code generate will be happening on the fly for your target device. So that's where this XLA compiler, which is uh, for still it is in 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 experimental phase, uh, and lots of research is going on, but uh, 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 the stable version is with us, so we can use that. So XLA compilation flow, uh, I mean, flow we will see, but XLA compiler is, is the answer um, which we were talking about, the limitations of the above function. So what is happening here? The XLA compilation flow is taking one high level optimization code, which is XLA HLO, okay, XLA HLO. By the way, the XLA stands for accelerated linear algebra. So most of the operations you are seeing inside generating one model is basically uh, your uh, linear algebraic operations and optimization for these operations. So accelerated linear algebra compiler. And so for this compiler, the input for this compiler is HLO, which is high level optimized XLA. And depending on the target dependent optimizations, it will again generate another set of XLA HLO. And this will in turn get into converted into a code generated for the XLA back. And then XLA back end will actually provide the kernels for the uh, target GPU, TPU, and CPU. So operates on the HLO IR, but how this HLA IR actually looks, and, and uh, it's, it's fast enough to, uh, to not to get noticeable for, uh, for large models. So now, 
how these optimizations are happening just a bit of theory we will we will see because uh, we we need to learn what is happening behind the scene actually because the way you will apply this linear algebraic uh, compiler or 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 uh, excel just in time compiler there are many options to be to be uh, to to use it in many several environments and and actually where you will use that to understand this you need to understand a bit basics like how it is optimizing and things so that we will talk about and we will directly uh, go into how we can implement this essentially in the end so the hlo idea or hlo intermediate representation whatever you call it is basically uh, functionally in nature okay uh, of course uh, there are some limitations in terms of already used algorithm that we have seen in the previous class that is not possible so uh, that is actually uh, not compilable for hlia and the number of operations that i was talking about is very very less in terms in contrast with the tensor flow operations that are there. so if you see total amount of tensor flow operations 1500 tensor flow operations are there in HLOIR, you have 50 operations, around 50. And it's a strictly typed data type plus shape should be uh, uh, static in nature. So now, as you can see, I was talking about these uh, 50 operations. So that means these operations are highly optimized, uh, which of course are a subset of these 1500 operations. And all the operations are not actually compilable in excellent so that's where you need to know which are the operations you are going to compile to get it optimized for your target model training so let's uh, talk about the fusion uh, operation here because this is how the new operations or new kernels being generated and the target kernels will be generated by this fusion operation and the fusion operation is essentially drastically reducing the memory bandwidth how let's say uh, so from this previous example we have this multiply add operations and these kernels who are being generated right so in this multiply uh, kernel you can see uh, two read operations were there and here uh, one read one write uh, and here two read and one write operation right so in total you have three read operations two write operations to execute these two kernels now, if you infuse these two operations inside your compilation flow into a let's say fused mal add, okay, where you just uh, have these two instead of three read operation and one uh, uh, two uh, write operation, now you have two read operations and one write operation. So you can see so from this very simple example of just using this multiply and add operation of course they are actually based on vectors okay it's not a simple multiply and addition operation but uh, from this simple multiply and or addition operation you can see how many number of read and write instructions or operations we are getting reduced and you can imagine for how many operations you can reduce in a full uh, fledged uh, tensor flow model training so right, this is the fused operation, and 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 this this is the uh, generated kernel that we want to generate from the Excel compilation, right? The fused operations. So if you see at the IR before fusing, okay. So basically, this is the IR before going into the Excel compilation flow. So this is very complex operation. All the complex uh, uh, computational flow. You have this complex graph. And after fusing all the operations which are actually capable of fusing it will automatically analyze and it will fuse the, those operations and you will have this fused graph so you can see uh, for a for a uh, full full uh, fledged training pipeline you can uh, fuse those operations and you can generate a new uh, graph for that and which will be optimized highly optimized and and will be compatible for your target devices as well as you can see that if you you want to store the model if you have fused operations now how much storage 
efficiency you are getting in terms of storing the model itself also. So for uh, memory constraint devices, storing the model will also be helpful using this uh, XLA compiler. Uh, now, what are the details and how we will use that inside a TensorFlow? Let's see that. And also we will discuss a bit of limitations that will give you a flavor of the research that is going on still. Uh, so so we, we will see how to use that and, and what are the limitations in a, in a compiler. So as I was mentioning that uh, the function is essentially serializing the, the computational graph for your TensorFlow model, any TensorFlow code for that matter. And inside the JIT compile tool, if you uh, make it true, so that means you are enabling the XLA compiler. And the graph will now, whatever has been generated by this tf dot function runtime will be actually compiled. That means uh, converted into HLO of uh, IR, then all the optimizations will happen, and then you will generate the code for the target XLA device. And it performs just in time compilation, so it is on the fly. So how it happens? So basically, you, you, you are trying uh, to start from the tier random, which is the uh, TensorFlow tier dot function runtime. You have the graph, you have the bridge. The, basically, uh, the, the compilation cache will actually do the bridging because uh, you'll see uh, in, in, in few slides that this compilation cache, which is generating the XLA HLO, actually uh, making the bridge between the graph and the XLO or uh, HLO, that will happen in the cache. And, and, and depending on the availability of already compiled code or already code generated HLA, uh, XLA HLO, you will not be uh, generating new codes for that. So it's, it's highly efficient in that, in that sense. Then you do the optimizations, code generation, and produce the executions. So that's that's the simple flow uh, that that we have. So now, once you have enabled the tf dot function runtime as well as g compilation equal to true for this particular function that we were trying to, so we are we have now back the the function with the runtime as well as we have enabled the compilation for the g compilation true. Uh, for this particular function. So now we have generated the fused operation, which it was earlier four operations, okay, four uh, operations, uh, four kernels basically. And now we have one kernel uh, and, and you can see that how much time you have reduced. So for this simple example, it was around three times, three to five times, right? Uh, so yeah, on an average four times speed up you would get. Right. For this simple uh, using of operations. So now, uh, what are the computations you want to fuse? Of course, the expensive ones, and you can fuse the entire training loop. Right? You can you can apply the the JIT completion true for your distributed training loop. Uh, but of course, for now, it is only supporting the mirrored strategy, but we will see, and also uh, you can distribute. Uh, uh, you can apply the distributed training loop with uncompilable collectives also. So some of the kernels or some of the compile uh, collectives are not compilable uh, because it has very less number of operations that we have seen, right? Around 50 operations compared to your 1500 operations in TensorFlow. So all the uh, all the operations will not be compilable. So some of these operations might be uh, uncompilable. And when you are distributing the training loop, there are ways how you can actually uh, specify some of the part of your uh, training strategy uh, or distribution strategy to be uh, compiled by the XLA and not to be by the uh, XLA. So uh, it's, it's amazing. So uh, expensive computation. So let's say we have this expensive computation as a very expensive computation function, right? We can define one function and wrap it with function runtime and enable G compilation too. 
as simple as that. You can have entire function fused and, and generated the optimized graph for that. You can have entire training loop as I was mentioning. So now entire training loop, if you want to uh, do that, you can define one training, uh, let's say module for that, right? And in this function, you have the training, uh, basically generating the gradients and updating the gradients and so on. And so, on. so the entire loop here, you are actually wrapping it with the uh, function and G compilation. So that is one case. So complex operation in terms of time or expensive operations uh, or expensive functions rather, the entire training loop, you can wrap it with. Now next, the distribution strategy. If you want to distribute the training training loop, that also you can do. So defining the strategy, how you have you, you have to define the strategy you have seen in the previous class. And this strategy was for the mirror strategy. So we have started several other strategies also, but for this is only applicable for the uh, mirror strategy. And you can see that uh, that the entire training step is wrapped with this function runtime. And when you are actually calling this training step under this strategy, so that will be essentially compiled to your XLA uh, using XLA compiler. Now, this is the, 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 the entire training loop, right? And in, in some distribution strategies uh, like, uh, like forward, right? So where uh, some of the steps, let's say optimize, uh, optimizer update, right? gradient updates are not supported, not compilable. So what we will do in that space? So what? It's it's simple again. Train step essentially is the loop for your training. Calculating loss is supported in your uh, Excel compiler, and and you you define one function for that compile step where you will computing the gradients. So all this backward pass, everything is is happening there. Now, uh, in this distribution strategy, uh, applying gradients, which is the update updateation stage for your parameters is not supported. So you just keep it out of that function. And when you are defining that strategy, use that strategy with this training step and, and it will automatically keep this uh, graph out of that uh, apply gradients uh, pipeline. So you can see, uh, there is flexibility to to uh, define its its usage as you wish. Uh, so basically, you can define which functions are going to be uh, compiled with XA and which functions will not. But you can use both. Uh, you can use both together in inside your training problem. So that's that's very simple. But uh, what what is actually a bit difficult is to identify the blocks which will be uh, actually compiled in Excel. Right? Of course, there will be uh, some blocks which will be uncompilable and some blocks which are compilable. The very naive strategy is you can apply anywhere. Okay, You can apply tf.function, wrap it with any function that you want to uh, accelerate. You do just in time compiler true. If that is uncompilable, that will give you an error. That's that's the simple way. Or you can rely on the profiler. So you can you can rely like, let's say these many kernels you have, you want to fuse them. Okay, so these kernels are getting bottlenecked by the uh, function calls and so. So you, you can use TensorBoard profiler and you can see the the kernels which are getting bottlenecked. Any any profiler you can use DLPROF also you can use TensorFlow you can use, but the main thing is that you can identify uh, uh, many such smaller kernels. Usually the larger compiler uh, compiled block is is uh, actually gives you better performance in terms of XLA compilation. So you can you can just try it out and see what will be the best for your uh, particular training loop that you are defining. If you are not so sure, there are flexibility as well. That is called auto clustering. So that means if you 
keep this environmental variable p of x left facts equal to p of x left output g equal to 2 which is essentially enabling the auto clustering inside your environment that means you do not need to identify the kernels or operations to be fused and wrap it with the kernel dot runtime of course there is another way which is tf dot optimizer dot set chip auto clustering it will identify so, so it will analyze the entire computational graph and it will identify these are the operations that i want to cluster them and, and optimize and fuse them into uh, XLA compile. So basically this kind of functional fusion it will do encapsulate the, the entire cluster. So this kind of automatic clustering can be used. So if you want to, uh, if you're not so sure in, in the beginning, just to see what are the uh, kernels are being, uh, let's say uh, optimized, converted, and, and fused into your optimized operations that you can check. And you can explore the performance that uh, gain you are achieving. But there are some glitches here because this is fully automatic. You do not know actually, right? So you can go either way. You can get very high uh, performance or maybe very low performance, right? It, it's hard to uh, predict the behavior. Now, what predict behavior means if you change a simple line or, or any any even if one parameter inside your training loop and you have enabled the auto clustering that means each time you are running that if and if you have made a very simple change it can make drastic change inside your target compilation so you you might get some weird performance clips for that matter so it's better if you if you just uh, know the, uh, the the function itself you can just wrap it with the g compilation tool and use the predicted behavior whatever you can have you have the optimized performance for this particular function or you will get error if it's it's not compilable now not compilable means let's say you are uh, loading some data from from your uh, resource maybe a local disk or remote sources and in the process of loading you are actually let's say decoding something or maybe applying some image processing which is uh, uh, let's say image encoding decoding which is not particularly supported in in, in gpus uh, or maybe xla target device right so in that case, XLA will be a return you an error, and that will actually be uh, uploaded to the CPU part, right? So uh, it, it's 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 automated. So you just see the error and and change your JIT compilation to function wrapper. But anyway, I mean you you get some predictable behavior that that it will it will get this kind of output. Uh, so. Uh, but there are some limitations that you need to know because uh, uh, you need to know some unsupported operations as I was mentioning that image encoding decoding, which is not supported in XLA uh, compilation. And recompilation will happen every time you change the ships because it is actually uh, based on the cache based uh, IR generation. So we will see one example, such example, and that will actually reduce the performance that you want to achieve. Recompilation will happen also if you have some constant changes. So recompilation means, so it, it, it's it's on the fly compilation. So recompilation means it will take a bit time if you are uh, if you are changing something and recompiling. One such example that we will see here. Let's say you have, uh, uh, well, uh, there, there may be uh, uh, unsupported operations, maybe many of them image decoding ops are not supported. And uh, so you, you will get runtime exception, as I was mentioning, that you will get an error. And you can trace that wherever it is happening, and, and you can change that for, for your uh, private Excel compilation. So uh, you will get some error like this. So you will just return that 
this is the error uh, and this is the reference basically uh, the the image decode that you are using to to process this data or while loading the data okay so this process you wanted to um, optimize with this tf uh, function one time and this operation is not supported it will give an error and you know that this is not supported if you don't know of course you will get a list of operations that is supported in tensorflow.org and you will go to the xla and what the uh, uh, the hlo uh, optimizer or ir what is uh, what are the operations that are uh, supported that you can get a list well so uh, now when uh, what are the uh, cases when you will get uh, some performance glitches when you have static shifts change so basically uh, if you see that uh, this 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 uh, basically this function uh, this cumulative uh, sum okay and this function is uh, targeting these uh, vectors right or, or these tensors and now you have the the shapes of of these tensors 10 10 10 10 in the next compilation also or, or next competition graph you can see it's the same dimension 10 10 10 10 so that means it will not again compile for this particular section it will use already cached IR generated and it will generate the code for it because it has all the dimensions same it has because it was typed strictly typed the xlo uh, uh, excel hlo is strictly typed and and shaped also uh, must be static so if you have the same shapes you your code will not be uh, recompiled and if you have changed so basically in the third uh, operation you can see once uh, the the number of ones are getting increased here the bound is getting increased so that means uh, it is uh, no longer supported the the, the previous uh, uh, IR is no longer supported and you need to generate new IR so you will again recompile so basically it will take some more time you expected that it will happen because all the things are supported so basically yes supported compilable but due to this shape changes inside your code section it is taking actually a bit of more time because of recompilation such another recompilation uh, uh, scenario may appear if you have uh, constant argument changes basically you can see that in this function you have two arguments one tensor size of 10 10 and 0 10 10 0 so again so for this ir is there in the cache cache hit again so it will not generate and for that you'll see that one more change is there in the constant and it needs recompilation. So basically, uh, uh, so so such functions where we are actually comparing, let's say, which is the maximum between this, uh, given the tensor here, okay, a, and uh, so so you 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 are trying to figure it out what are the things happening because of which we are getting uh, performance degradation. That is because you uh, something might be wrong with. Uh, with different uh, constant changes inside your code. So these are the limitations that you can see. So of course, uh, researchers are trying to figure it out how, how to actually uh, uh, pipeline these uh, transformations and, and uh, make predictions like uh, what can come in the, in the, in the next and do, do uh, introduce some di some kind of dynamic nature because uh, that is very very important so some research is going on in towards that direction now you uh, have the flexibility to inspect your code what is happening actually you can uh, you can en enable this flag okay so uh, you can inspect part of the generated hl basically the generated graph or infused graph that that you have after the optimization part of the graph that is available so both you can inspect and and see what are the things going on inside your code 
uh, for your target model. Basically, this is one example where you can apply this. So basically here, defining one function, which is wrapped in the function runtime with cheat compiled to, and we are generating, so basically here we are generating the HLO for that particular. Okay, so if dot experimental gate compiler IR for this XY we are generating. So you will have XY tensor or whatever, and it will actually be in the generated HLO. To see the optimizations, what are the optimizations that that Excel has performed? You can call this function if dot. So if is your function which is being wrapped by the function runtime with JIT compiled true. So if dot experimental get compiler IR X Y stage equal to optimized HLO because there are several stages. You want to see optimized HLO or what are the optimized optimizations happen. Or you can uh, you can print the graph into a, a, a dot form, okay? And and you can use graph V's or or graph V's converter from let's say a dot file to JPEG and, and you want to see the, the graph generated, right? So if dot experimental gate compiler here will generate the dot file for your uh, target or optimized uh, code computational graph. So that's uh, about it and we will use that and inside uh, with, with all the pipelines that we have discussed, right? So starting from your uh, data pipeline, with TFDS or TF.data. Then you have different uh, distribution strategies. Uh, then you have mixed precision, you have uh, Excel compilation flow. So you can see that there are many, many things that you can apply to get uh, much more enhanced performance for your uh, target model. So we will see all together uh, in, in one example, but uh, in conclusion, so we have to uh, the, the option for tf dot function wrapper with JIT compiler two annotate with that for the particular function and you will get great performance with that. Basically, in in general case, you will get for of course for a heavy model. We'll show you that in 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 uh, I mean uh, applying uh, randomly with with very small models, it might uh, uh, get you bad results even okay, sometimes. Ideally, uh, uh, you will compile the largest cluster for that. And uh, so that, that's where you will get the best performance out of it. So let's jump into the demo session where we will explore more about that. 